Hello there everyone and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Over the last two topic review videos, we've been talking a lot about personality and how it's formed. Today we're going to be reviewing Unit 7, Topic 7 of AP Psychology, as we turn our view over to behaviorism and social cognitive theories of personality. To understand how our personality is formed, we can look at our past to see what behaviors have been reinforced with rewards and which behaviors were punished. By understanding our past, we are able to see how our personality is formed. Individuals such as Julian Rotter help us understand how our personality is shaped from a behaviorist point of view. Rotter believed that our personality developed over time. He thought there had to be more than just punishment and rewards. Rotter thought that we learn from what to expect from different situations. Our behavior is then determined based on our expectations and based on how much we are invested or care about an outcome. This is known as Rotter's expectancy theory. The idea that we can control our outcome is referred to as locus of control, a concept we last talked about in our Unit 4 video. Remember, we have an internal locus control and an external locus of control. External locus of control are different outside factors that impact us and could determine our fate or outcome. These are factors that we could not control and are out of our hands. For example, how individuals at school treat you or the amount of money that your family has. While internal locus of control is how we control and impact our own fate. For example, if you study hard, you can do well on a test. You control how much you study. When we have a high internal locus of control, we believe that we can control our situation. If there's a high external locus of control, then we don't believe that we could impact the results of a situation. Another behaviorist was Bandura. We've talked about him multiple times already. He believed that it wasn't just our environment that impacted and shaped our personality, that there are actually multiple factors that shaped an individual's personality. This became known as Bandura's social learning theory. This theory consists of observational learning, self-efficacy, and reciprocal determinism. Observational learning is when we observe certain behaviors or actions and then attempt to replicate them, while self-efficacy is our belief in our ability to do something and be successful at it. Remember, our self-efficacy is different from our confidence and self-esteem. Self-efficacy is our belief in ourselves to complete a specific task, while self-esteem is what we think about ourselves, and our confidence level is how we overall think about our ability. Lastly, remember that reciprocal determinism looks at an individual's environment, behavior, and an individual's feelings and belief, and how they're influencing each other and impact one another. For example, say you are a risk taker and you enjoy doing challenging tasks. We can see that risk taking behavior will lead you to try out different sports or activities that are more risky or physical. For example, maybe you decide to take on rock climbing. Now we can see your behaviors are impacting your environment as you're going to be putting yourself in more risky or challenging environments where you might meet others who have similar behaviors. As you talk and get to know other people, they'll start to influence your thoughts and beliefs. You can see how all these different things and different factors can influence one another. All right, now comes the time to practice what we have learned. Answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section down below. As always, if you found value with this video, consider subscribing and check out the Ultimate Review Packet. It's a great resource that'll help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Mr. Sin, and I will see you next time online.